This is Ham College, Episode 63 for March 31st, 2020. Ham College is brought to you by ICOM. Get out and be active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. And by hamstudy.org, a great way to study for your next license exam. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Ham College. I'm Professor Thomas. And I'm Dean Martin. And I had thought about it a little bit earlier. We were, uh, well, you were having some internet issues. And I asked you for a still photo that I could show over there if I needed to, in case something went wrong. And I thought, you know, I really need to get a picture of Dean Martin to stick over there. That would... That that'd probably be better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of partial to the one with the hot in the hot tub myself. Yeah, well, that one or the one on the bed with all the ladies behind you. <laughs> that was a classic too. But wow, what a time here on Earth. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, things have kind of changed a lot since the last show. They have quite a bit. Uh, wow. COVID-19 spreading across the world. It's uh, it's in every state here in the U.S. And I don't know. There's probably a few countries that, that don't have it yet, but they probably won't escape for real long. Yeah, probably not very many of them, but uh, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of the new reality at the moment, but hopefully if everybody follows the guidelines and stays stays put for a little while, it'll run its course. Yeah, and, you know, that's that's really what we need to do. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not, and, you know, there's, well, I don't have to go into it. We're doing it right here, though. You, although it, I could reach out and touch you. That's my ear, man. Yeah. Ow. Other side. <laughs> you are several miles away, so <laughs> so we're okay here. Maybe. Yeah, that's a little bit more than the six-foot recommendation. Yeah, it is. Well, we are... We're going to have some questions tonight, and we're going to have some answers. And what did we talk about last month? You know what? I don't have it on my piece of paper, so you're going to have to give me a clue. We talked about operating standards last time. I must have slept through that part. (laughs) You did. (laughs) Part of it. Uh, yeah, apparently I did too. So anyway, what are we going to talk about this month? Uh, How about station restrictions and operating standards? Like restrictions on station location? General operating? You know, I really haven't read these questions, so if I did, I would have seen the answers. Well, no, that wasn't a question. General operating restrictions, spurious emissions, antenna structure restrictions, and races operations. Oh, yeah. So that's that's the kind of excitement you can look forward to tonight right here. It sounds riveting. Yeah, this is, uh, what is this, part two of our studies on the amateur extra exam. Well, actually, it's... It's the third episode that we've had on the extra exam. It's really the first, second one with some real questions in it, though. 
That's, other than a few little teaser questions. That's right. Anytime we're doing a live stream here on either Ham College or Amateur Logic, we've got a chat room going on at the same time. You can watch that right here. Join in and amateurlogic.tv slash chat. And if you're not there... Yep. If, you, if you're watching a live stream and you're not in the chat room, you're missing half the fun. It's just up to you to decide which half. Yep. We have not been able to determine that yet. We are running tests, though, and one day we hope to know. So on into the first question of the night, then. Which of the following constitutes a spurious emission? A, an amateur station transmission made without the proper call sign identification. B, a signal transmitted to prevent its detection by any station other than the intended recipient. C, any transmitted signal that unintentionally interferes with another licensed radio station. Or D, an emission outside of the signal's necessary bandwidth that can be reduced or eliminated without affecting the information transmitted. Okay. Uh... Spurious emission. Uh, amateur station transmission, maybe without the proper call sign. That's not. That's just transmitting illegally. Um, B, signal transmitted prevents detection. Any station. That would be encrypted, and that's illegal on amateur radio bands also. Uh, C, any transmitted that unintentionally interferes with another licensed radio station. That's just, that's just interference. Intentional interference, which that's kind of illegal too on there. This has got to be D, an emission outside of the signal's necessary bandwidth that can be reduced or eliminated without affecting the information transmitted. I'm going with that one. Well, I don't even need to call a phone a friend or anything. I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. <laughs> well, I'm going to agree with you, and everybody in the chat room agrees with you, too. Apparently, this is a good question to start with tonight. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Almost. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see how I do. Which of the following is an acceptable bandwidth for digital radio Mondale DRM-based voice or digital SSTV digital transmissions made on the HF amateur bands? A, 3 kilohertz. B, 10 kilohertz. C, 15 kilohertz. Or D, 20 kilohertz. Hmm. Which of the following is an acceptable bandwidth for digital radio Mondial based voice or SSB digital transmissions made on the HF amateur bands? First, I didn't know that we could do DRM on, uh, on amateur radio. We need to look into that. That could be interesting. Yeah. Um... But I think the key here is on the HF amateur bands. And we know on HF, they don't like us to use a lot of bandwidth. So yep. de definitely not 20 kilohertz, because I don't know of any amateur transceivers that will pass that. Uh, not 15 kilohertz, that, that's pretty broad too. 10 kilohertz... For HF, I'm going to say no, That that's probably really more than you're allowed. I'm going to say it's A, 3 kilohertz, because that's what they want you to be on uh, on any single sideband transmissions, uh, 3 kilohertz or less, really. So I, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say it's A. Okay. That's, uh, that sounds like that's probably right. Uh, yeah, most of them are saying it's A in the chat room. And it is. Three kilohertz. All right. I'll give you that. Okay. Bam. That worked. Nailed it. 
Okay. It's almost like we've done that before. Virtually. But I don't but I don't have to break out the hand sanitizer now. No, the virtual hand sanitizer. There you go. Within what distance must an amateur station protect an FCC monitoring facility from harmful interference? Is it A, one mile? B, three miles? C, ten miles? Or D, 30 miles? What, within what distance must an amateur station protect an FCC monitoring facility? from harmful interference. 30 miles seems way out. Let's see, it's 10, three. I'm, I'm gonna go with the shortest the shortest one there. That's, that's the one that makes sense to me, A, one mile. Well, that's what they're saying over in the chat room and... Yeah, see, I got the under, the, my chat room's over there, so if I turn my head hard to the right, you can see I'm cheating. I'm going to have to put my cheat sheet up front next time if we do this from remote. Well, we're getting some <clears throat> mixtures here on this one. We're getting A, B, and C. I'm going to go with you. Something for everyone. I'm going to go with A. Just and The only reason I'm going with A is because 30 does seem too far to me. Uh -huh. And one mile seems like... Uh, one of the protection distances that we're required to meet in broadcast radio. So, yeah, it's it's surely a guess, but everybody one, guesses. One mile seems like a reasonable amount. Three miles, maybe, but 10 miles and 30 miles, that just seems pretty extreme. Yeah. So there was one mile. An FCC monitoring facility. You know, should have done some searching on that and see if we could find some pictures on just exactly what an FCC monitoring facility looks like. Yeah, I picture a little shack with a whole bunch of antennas sticking out of the top of it. I saw one one time, a mobile one. Oh, came, yeah? Came to the radio station where I was <clears throat> working. And it was, I don't know the year model, it, it was a 1970s, either an LTD or a Galaxy. Oh, wow. Apparently, this model came with, you know, two seats up front. It wasn't a bench seat. Mm -hmm. And the passenger seat was missing, and there was this rack mounted over there, and it, it had... Uh, swivel on it where you could spin it around and it was full of gear that and sounds perfect there were no antennas on the vehicle at all apparently really? it was hit in the headliner or something i don't know oh, exactly wow. how that worked out but yeah you would not know it was the fcc huh. unless you got close enough that hey what's what's that guy doing Riding a rack around, you know. <laughs> so today, you know, they could probably do it in the palm of their hand, but this was uh -huh. in probably the uh, mid to late eighties is when when I saw yeah. this one. So, Interesting. Yeah. What must be done before placing an amateur station within an officially designated wilderness area or wildlife preserve, or an area listed in the National Register of Historic Places. A, a proposal must be submitted to the National Park Service. B, a letter of intent must be filed with the Environmental Protection Agency. C, an environmental assessment must be submitted to the FCC. D, a form, what is that, FSD-15, must be submitted to the Department of the Interior. Wow. What must be done before placing an amateur station within an officially designated wilderness area 
or wildlife preserve or an area listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Wow. A proposal must be submitted to the National Park Service. I'm going to hold that one back for a second. Uh, B, a letter of intent must be filed with the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, I don't think that's it. I don't think it's D, a form FSD-15 must be submitted to the Department of Interior. And C, an environmental assessment must be submitted to the FCC. I'm going to say it's... Um, we might have buzzer action here. I'm going to say it's A. A proposal must be submitted to the National Park Service. I think, I think it's C. Because yeah, well, yeah. the National Park Service doesn't do all wilderness areas or wildlife preserves or the National Register of Historic Places. Well, yeah, and, and that's a good point. I see most of the chat room is saying C. So, here we go. <laughs> the most annoying sound in the world. <laughs> An environmental yeah. assessment must be submitted to the FCC. I knew it was either A or C. But apparently You're I just... Right. I About just, that part. I just didn't know which one. Well, you know, that's the first one I've missed on the extra poll. So. Well, it had to happen sooner or later. Well, it did. And it was a 50-50 chance it would be me. That is true. Yeah. Although, although the coins landed on the Tommy side several times here lately, so. Yeah. Totally redeemed myself. You did. You did on that one. For that for that time. Don't get too used to it, though, because who knows what's going to happen next. Well, I, I'm going to try my best. What is the National Radio Quiet Zone? A, an area in Puerto Rico surrounding the Arecibo Radio Telescope. Um. Uh, B, an area in New Mexico surrounding the White Sands Test Area. C, an area surrounding the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. Or D, an area in Florida surrounding Cape Canaveral. Eh, I don't think it's going to be D. That doesn't make sense to me. Because uh, when they have launches around there, I could see their possibly could be something but i don't think it is but i don't that one doesn't make sense puerto rico i don't think so either uh, arecibo radio telescope incidentally last year in the airport uh i met the guy that runs that place uh, on the way home from dayton um area in new mexico surrounding the white sands test area i think i think it's going to be c an area surrounding the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. Um, um, I could see, I could see they they're listening for really really weak signals, and so any anything strong could probably overload. Well, and that's, cause problems. That's what everyone's saying over in the chat room. Well, maybe, maybe they know the answer. That's I mean that's that, the one that to me in my mind makes sense there for that. Yeah, I I think you're right, and you are. These are kind of plausible. You could yeah. They, there's a little bit you could I could see where you would really consider each one of them. Yeah, but only the SETI people will be mad. Well, I don't even know if they're doing that anymore. I don't know either. I tell you what. Tell me. After that um, last smackdown I suffered there, <laughs> I th I think I need to get up and walk around just a second. 
Get out and be active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. The IC705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tips of your fingers and a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at 1 kilo or just over 2 pounds. With RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. 5 volt battery operation with BP272 or 10 watts with a 13.8 volt DC supply. Modes include single sideband, CW, AM, FM, as well as full D star functions. A large 4.3 inch color touchscreen and live band scope with waterfall. Integrated GPS with antenna and GPS logger, micro SD card for data storage, it comes standard with the HM243 speaker microphone, and it supports QRP and QRPP operations. The perfect accessory for the IC705 is the LC192 optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about this and all the great ICOM radios. Why don't we give away something? Okay. The sh- how about the shirt off my back? Your back? That works well, for me. Well, maybe not this particular one. And how about, I just so happen to have a ball cap right here, too. We could give away one of those. We could give away both of them. Okay. How, um, how do you get one? Well, if you'd like to win an ICOM Ham Crew t-shirt and an ICOM ball cap, what you need to do is go to Ham College at, well, you don't go there. It looks as good coming as you do going. Yeah. You need to send an email to hamcollege at amateurlogic.tv. The only requirements are that you have an email address and a name, and you you can put whatever you want in the subject. You can give us a a little note, a little howdy, or you can just give us a name, and we'll enter you. Yeah, almost everybody's got an email address, and most of you got names. Mm Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, the winner that was just drawn before the show tonight had a name and an email address. Sounds like he sounds like the perfect match. He's yeah, he's qualified. It's William Dabbs, uh, KC nine TPR. He said hi y'all. KC nine TPR Bill Dabbs General. Thank you. New to the show and Ham Nation. Please enter me and God bless seven three. Well, well, congrats. Congrats, Bill. You're going to look good at the next ham fest whenever we start having ham fest again. Oh, well, you'll be ready. You'll be ready and properly outfitted. So, once again, how do you enter? Send an email with just your name. If you want to put a note in there, you can. That's great. We'd like to hear from you, but it's not required. Send an email to hamcollege at amateurlogic.tv. If if you don't get drawn this month, the list gets cleared out after each drawing. So if, if you want to enter for next month, send your email in again. Um, so we start over with a clean slate. And those email addresses that we're getting from there, we don't sell them. They don't give we don't give them away. They just get deleted as soon as, uh, except for the one that's the winner for the month. So no need to get spam or anything from anybody for entering. There's no concern about it. True. As a matter of fact, I just deleted them all just right before showtime tonight after we drew Bill's name there. So it's a clean slate. It's anybody's contest at this point. So go ahead and send them in now. Be ready. Get the way you don't forget. Yep. You'll look this good at the ham fest. Wait, this good. Okay. How can you refuse an offer like that? I know, right? 
Uh, well, b- before anybody <laughs> does, let's get on back into the questions here tonight. <laughs> Probably uh, need to roll my pa- pants legs up after all that sales pitch there. <laughs> let's see. You, I ask you the last one. That, okay, and then I'll ask you one. Okay. And I imagine you have a good one for me. Oh, I do. I got one right here. I've been saving for you. Which of the following additional rules apply if you're installing an amateur station antenna at a state or near a public use at a site at or near a public use airport? A, you may have to notify the Federal Aviation Administration and register it with the FCC as required by Part 17 of the FCC rules. B, you must submit engineering drawings to the FAA. C, you must file an environmental impact statement with the EPA before construction begins. Or D, you must obtain a construction permit from the Airport Zoning Authority. Wow, you give me all the tough ones. Yeah, I was just thinking. I'm glad I didn't get that one. Which of the following additional rules apply if you are installing an amateur station antenna at at a site at or near a public use airport? I wonder what constitutes near. I don't think it's A, because notify the FAA and register it with the FCC is required by Part 17 of the FCC rules. I don't think that's it. B, you must submit engineering drawings to the FAA. Um, Maybe. C, you must file an environmental impact statement with the EPA before construction begins. No, I I don't think um, the EPA would be involved in this. Or D, you must obtain a construction permit from the airport zoning authority. Hmm. I'm going to say it's D. You must obtain a construction permit from the airport zoning authority. Uh, the chat room's saying A, so I must be way off base. I, I don't know either for sure, but those others, I don't think it's B. I don't think it's C for environmental impact statement. It would either be D or A. I'll find mm-hmm. the F A A. And register it with the FCC. I'm not familiar with Part 17, but I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I would probably guess A, but I don't know. Okay. Well, practically everyone in the chat room is saying A. Two buzzers for me tonight. Boy, I didn't shuffle these questions very good. Yeah, well, that's okay. I, if you get one more, I'll feel a lot better about last month because I think I got buzzed a lot. Did I get buzzed two or three times? I think it was three. It was three. Yeah, so I figured you'd remember. I I could break your record yet. Right here tonight. That's one record I'm okay with you breaking. Well, to what type of regulations does PRB-1 apply? Is it A, Homeowners Association? B, FAA Tower Height Limits? C, State and Local Zoning? D, Use of Wireless Devices in Vehicles? PRB1. I don't think it's going to be D. I don't think it's A because homeowners associations, they make up their own rules. I don't think there's some I don't think there's some regulation that applies to all of them not that I'm aware of. So it's got to, to in my mind, it's got to be B or C. And I sure hate I can't see the chat room right now. I'm going to go with C. <laughs> Alright. 
And I gotta look at the chat room. You know, there's, there's I, A, there's C's and B's. I thought I might have had you because well, some some of them picked B too. So I was sitting all around basically the same thing, state and local. Yeah, PRB one, and and this has been in the amateur radio news a lot where they're talking about trying to allow hams to put antennas up at their homes and the the rules or regulations oh. don't apply to homeowners association but they do to your state and local government the governments aren't supposed to you know be able to say, no, you can't put up any antenna. They've got to offer you, uh, well, I'm not going to say the words because it could come up yet. So, Oh, I think I, I think I remember, I think I remember that now that you're saying that. Yep. So. Okay. I think I, I remember. I remember because I think they, like they can't, supposedly can't stop you from putting up a, an antenna, but the homeowners thing can. Yeah. Okay. Well. Hmm. That was tough. I needed Tylenol now. I needed that one right off the bat. So. Yeah, I figured you probably we, would. We actually, we started off on the wrong foot tonight. If we had swapped who had the first question, things would have gone much differently tonight. For you. Much better for you. I didn't, I just said different. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. What limitations may the FCC place on an amateur station if its signal causes interference to domestic broadcast reception, assuming that the receivers involved are of good engineering design? A. The amateur station must cease operation. B. The amateur station must cease operation on all frequencies below 30 megahertz. C, the amateur station must cease operation on all frequencies above 30 megahertz. D, the amateur station must avoid transmitting during certain hours on frequencies that cause the interference. What limitation may the FCC place mm -hmm. on an amateur station if its signal causes interference to domestic broadcast reception, Assuming that the receivers involved are of good engineering design. Yeah, and I'm going to say right there, if somebody's using a receiver that's junk, then, you know, this is not really enforceable. But if they've got a, you know, a good, a good designed receiver they're trying to listen to a radio station on, then, you know, we've got some culpability there. Uh, A, the amateur station must cease operation. Uh, e, well, I'm going to hold back on that for a minute. B, the amateur station must cease operation on all frequencies below 30 megahertz. Or C, the amateur station must cease operation on all frequencies above 30 megahertz. That makes no sense because they didn't say if it was the AM or the FM band, just that mm -hmm. it was a domestic uh, broadcast reception. So I know for sure it's not, well, I feel like it's not B or C. D, the amateur station must avoid transmitting during certain hours on frequencies that cause the interference. And to me, that seems like the most likely candidate there because during... Uh, during normal waking hours or, you know, um, maybe prime time and such, if you cease transmitting on those frequencies that cause a problem, you wouldn't be interfering with anybody. And then, you know, um, real late at night, if you broadcast on them, or not broadcast, but transmit on them, you're not is likely to be causing anybody any interference because they're not listening anyway. I'm going to say it's mm -hmm. D. Um, what do you think, Dean? Uh, that's that's the one that makes sense to me. During certain hours on the frequencies, mm -hmm. yeah, I could see what that would be more more to the 
source of the problem. Yeah, some of them are saying A the, over in the chat room, so maybe they're not cheating because there were A's and D's both on this one here. Um, yeah, you know, and, and here's... Here's the thing. The amateur station must cease operation. No. That means no transmitted at all. Well, all you got to do is avoid the problem frequencies, and then you're not causing any interference. So you don't have to cease operation altogether. Right. So that's how I would rule that one out. I'm going to say D. And yeah, and, and they didn't say AM or... or uh Right. FM, like you said, so the frequency thing doesn't come into play. Right. 30 megahertz. Good job. Well, thank you. I needed to get that one correct. <laughs> Which amateur stations may be operated under RACES rules? A, only those club stations licensed to amateur extra class operators. Uh, B, any FCC licensed amateur station except a technician class. C, any FCC licensed amateur station certified by the responsible civil defense organization for the area served. D, any FCC licensed amateur station participating in the military auxiliary radio system. I don't think it's I don't think it's limited by the class for everybody that's doing the racy stuff. So I don't think it's gonna be A and I don't think it's gonna be B. Any C any FCC license amateur station certified by the responsible civil defense for the area sir. I think it's C. Okay. Number C. That's what they're saying in the chat room. You pull that one off. By that much. <laughs> well, it was really that close? <laughs> no. Nah, it was either C or C or D, and I was pretty sure it was C. Yeah. Civil defense thing. Yeah, because Mars is not the same thing as Racy's. Uh -huh. What frequencies are authorized to an amateur station operating under the RACES rule? A, all amateur service frequencies authorized to the control operator. B, specific segments in the amateur service, MF, HF, VHF, and UHF bands. C, specific local government channels. Or D, military auxiliary radio system, Mars channels. What frequencies are authorized to an amateur station operating under RACES rules? Well, I say you can throw out D right off the bat because Mars and RACES are two, two different things. They're not, they're not the same thing. Uh, specific local government frequencies. No, I don't think they're going to want you transmitting on local government channels. Yeah, it's uh, probably not a good idea. Yeah, you shouldn't even have a radio capable of doing that. So, I don't think that's it. Um, B, specific segments of the amateur service, MF, HF, VHF, and UHF bands. Now, I don't recall seeing any frequency segments set aside for races. But the first answer there, A, all amateur service frequencies authorized to the control operator. You know, that's the case in just everything else amateur radio. If, if I'm a control operator and I'm an extra, and that means I'm in charge of this this particular transmitter that's transmitting right here. Although you may be talking over there and you may be a uh, technician or you may not even be an amateur, but I'm still the control operator because I'm in charge of that station. What Whatever privileges I have, you you can transmit on those. Mm -hmm. If, you know, 
as, as long as I'm responsible and in charge of it, uh, the radio. So I'm going to say it's A. That's the same as it would be on anything else, races or not. So uh, I'm going with A. Okay. Looks like the chat room's all going with A as well. So let's see. What about you? You you okay with that one? A. A okay. Okay. Let me see if I, can, up. if I can pull out a special question for you here next. Ah, see? Uh-oh. Yeah, you sh this should not be allowed. What does PRB1 <laughs> require of regulations affecting amateur radio? A, no limitations may be placed on antenna size or placement. B, reasonable accommodations of amateur radio must be made. C, amateur radio operations must be permitted in any private residence. Or D, use of wireless devices in a vehicle is exempt from regulation. That wireless devices and vehicle thing just keeps coming up. So I'm going to scratch that one off the list. I don't think that's it. I know it's not it because of the question I had earlier. Um, no limitations may be placed. I don't think that's true. I think there are limitations. That's why there's a regulation. Reasonable accommodations of amateur radio must be made or amateur radio operations must be permitted. I haven't read the text of it, so I'm going with I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Hey. That's that's what they're all saying over in the chat room. And you got it, and that's almost the exact words I used earlier when I said, wait, this could come up later, so I didn't quite mm -hmm. say it, but, yeah, reasonable accommodations. That that means you can't put up whatever you want, but the, you know, state or local authorities must reasonably accommodate you. Say, okay, we have something. You can put up a 20-foot antenna, you know. Uh, oh, boy. Or whatever. They don't. They don't define reasonable, but there yeah. you go. And I think we've got one more question for tonight. One for you. One for me. So we might, we might, uh, we could still have If you would go ahead and get a buzzer on this one, we can be tied. Well, that is a, a lofty goal for me. It is. Yeah. I, I could see where you'd want to achieve that. All right. Well, then hit me with a good one. Okay. Here it comes. Coming at you. It's a long one, too, it looks like. What must the control operator of, of a repeater operating in the 70 centimeter band do if a radio location system experiences interference from the repeater? A. Cease operation. Or make changes to the repeater to mitigate the interference? B, file an FAA NOTAM, or Notice to Airmen, with the repeater system's ERP, call sign, and six-character grid locator. C, reduce the repeater antenna hat or height above average terrain. Or D, all of these choices are correct. So, I'm glad you got this one, but this you may know this one. What must the control operator of a repeater operating in the 70 centimeter band do if a radio location system experiences interference from that repeater? Well, it's not D because none of not all of those choices are correct. Um. C, reduce the antenna height above average terrain, uh, the repeater antenna. No, because that may not necessarily solve the issue. Um, A, cease operation or make changes to the repeater to mitigate the interference. Boy, that... 
That sounds like the most logical thing. Let's look at D, though. File a FAA notum. Notice the airman with the repeater systems, ERP call sign, and six character grid locator. That. Huh. No. The airman don't care what your call sign, your ERP, or your six character grid locator are. If you're interfering with them, they just want you to stop doing it. So. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a cease operation or make changes to the repeater to mitigate the interference. Makes the most sense to me. Uh -huh. That's what everybody's saying in the chat room. So, bam. There you go. Nailed it. Nailed oh, it. well, better luck next time. Or worse luck next time, brother. No, just just luck. Just leave it at luck. <laughs> Okay, well, that gets us through tonight's uh, questions. Well, we'll be back in just a moment because we've got a little more to talk about tonight. So, don't go away. Are you new to the ham world or an existing amateur operator who wants to take your license to the next level? Study for your radio license exam at hamstudy.org. Hamstudy.org is a free online learning tool powered by ICOM. It was created by Richard Bateman, KD7BBC, Michael Stuffelbean, KV9G, and Rich Porter, KK6GKE, and it uses a modern web design to enhance the experience of studying for your technician, general, and amateur extra exams. Since 2013, hamstudy.org has helped new and existing hams to familiarize himself with the question pools, use stats-based flashcards to focus on material they need to learn, and take practice exams to gauge progress. Visit hamstudy.org on your desktop computer or mobile device. Register for a free account at hamstudy.org to access personalized study history and other site features. Prepare for an exam in an intuitive and comprehensive manner. Check out hamstudy.org, powered by ICOM, for free learning tools. Good luck on your next exam. We've got a couple of emails to go over tonight. Yeah. Interesting stuff. We knew we'd have a few minutes left over. And we uh, want to find something interesting to talk about. This first one here, tell us about this, Tommy. Yeah, I got one from... Uh from Patrick, VE6PRM. He said, During my recent trip to Vancouver Island, my daughter and I hiked up to the war memorial at the summit of Mount, I would call it Mount Prevost, but he says it's called Prevo by the locals. Anyway, I thought it would be a good idea to bring along my ID51A and open spot too to see if I could make a D star contact from the summit. I managed to get through to my friend Dennis, VE6BGZ in Calgary. Alberta on reflector XRF 519 Echo. It was a good chance to show off some of my ham college shirts. Mount Prevo elevation is 2,595 feet and is located in the northwest of Duncan, British Columbia. The war memorial is the white object at the summit, and that's way up there. Barely visible in my photograph taken from Cowichan Cal Valley Highway. Thanks again for both AmateurLogic.tv and Ham College. I'm a big fan. By the way, I really like the title of your last episode. He's talking about the great toilet paper famine, <laughs> uh, Amateur Logic. But uh, he's looking good in that Ham College shirt. And uh, that's uh, Vancouver Island. That's actually one of the places I talk about a lot of places on my bucket list. And apparently my bucket list is very long, but... Being into photography, that's a really beautiful place. They got a lot of uh, forests with a lot of moss and stuff growing on them there, and I hope to go there one day on a photo trip. And probably maybe do a little radio stuff while I'm there, there as well. But uh, anyway, thanks, Patrick, for sending in the email. He, was, he looked like he was the best-dressed ham on the whole island. And I've got one here by a guy. He, uh, he may still be in the chat room. He was in there earlier, right? No, I don't see him now, so he may have already gone. But it's our friend Jocelyn, KD8VRX, 
or yeah. VA2 VRX. That's uh, Jocelyn Braun. That's uh, Chris's father. And I don't remember Chris's call sign now, but, you know, he was uh, a popular young ham that's a, a friend of mine. And, oh, well, yours too, all of ours. Yeah, he's, he's been on Amateur Logic quite a few times. Yeah, and and we see he and his family every year at uh, at Hamvention and I think just about every year at Huntsville as well. So Jocelyn wrote and said, hope you are all doing okay. I wanted to share the following. This right here, 1970 promo on amateur radio from the ARRL. You can watch it right there on YouTube. There is the link. I'm not going to read all of that out because, well, you'll just have to go <laughs> look at the episode and get that link right there. I've watched this video before. It's pretty interesting. Uh -huh. uh, 1970, what amateur radio looked like then. And your mobile, it was so big, it, it probably would not fit under the dashboard of any uh, current model car. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were pretty big back then. Yeah, it's a neat video, though. I, I watched it, uh, watched it too. It's pretty cool. You got to go check it out. It's definitely worth the time. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And then he wanted to mention that Alenco, the makers of Snap Circuits, is making its e-learning manual free during the COVID-19 uh, crisis here. And this would be a good time to to maybe do a little learning. It, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything. It is at uh, elenco, that's E-L-E-N-C-O dot com slash E dash learning. He says if you look at the end oh. of Student okay. Manual Part 1, page 68, You'll see the section talking about electromagnetism and radio. Part 2 continues the experiments. The kits can be purchased at major retailers and also online. And he says that they purchased the kit years ago for Chris. And that might be the reason that he got his ham ticket. Uh, he said that everyone there is doing okay, uh, aside from maybe a little bit of uh, cabin fever, but they're all healthy. And he also noticed a lot more folks on HF calling CQ the other night. And so he got on and made uh, 25 QSOs within an hour. The bands may be dead, but folks are turning on their radios. 7-3, <laughs> Jocelyn. Okay. You know, that's things like that are what happens when you, you make your hot tea and honey with a couple of drops of concentrated lemon juice, and the lemon oh, yeah. juice gets away from you, and you, <laughs> <laughs> your tongue is kind of like paralyzed right down the center. Yeah. So yeah, a little. Yeah, it's a this all this uh, this social distancing and stay at home stuff. It's a great time for. I mean, this is what hams do anyway. It's like an ideal time to get on the air. So if you're not getting on the air, you. I mean, you should take advantage of it. Like, uh, and this anything. would actually make the best. This would be a good weekend, I believe, if you've got HF privileges to get on the air, because there is a contest running, I believe, this weekend. Oh, it's the uh, CQ uh, Worldwide WPX contest, single sideband. Where you can learn more about it is cqwpx.com. If you go there, you'll find everything there is to know about this contest. So check it out this weekend. Turn on your HF radio. Get on the air. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try. It's uh, I've been kind of enjoying, uh, not saying I'm enjoying being cooped up in the house, but I've done some ham stuff that I haven't had time to do. Uh, you know, because of my work schedule and being gone. So I've actually got Whisper running back here and just different stuff. I've just been kind of doing a lot of things. I got my hotspot. I've been on uh, D-Star quite a bit. So anyway, 
Try to make the best out of it. Yeah. Well, any final thoughts before we go tonight, Dean? No, I don't think so. Just uh, everybody follow the guidelines, do your part, and stay at home until things get better. Mm -hmm. But uh, get on the air. Enjoy. enjoy uh, you got a good excuse to stay in at the radio now. That's a, a good a good reason to uh, have Shaq fever. Yep. So, yeah, I agree. Um, stay out of public. Stay quarantined, regardless of whether you're worrying about catching it yourself. You don't want to spread it around. That's That's at least as important as whether or not you get it yourself is who you might give it to. So, um, practice your social distancing. And, you know, if we can all just get through this for a period of time and, and not expose each other, we'll get a break in this. So, that's, uh, that's my suggestion. Well, it's can't not, argue with that. It's not really mine. It's, it's actually the government's, but it's a, it's a very good one. And we'll be back uh, around the end of next month for the next time college. And we'll be back around the 15th of April. And no, you do not have to file your taxes in the U.S. by the 15th this year. Yeah, but that is my birthday episode. It is. Okay. Well, then you can this file This is going to be the only year in the history of me being born that everybody didn't hate my birthday. It's usually tax day. Oh. Yeah. Every, everybody hates my birthday, even me. Well, usually you know, have to pay. Naturally, we want you to enter in that contest. Ham College at AmateurLogic.tv. Send us an email with your name. If you got a call sign, you can stick it in there, but that's not required. And you might, you might look like that good. For the next, without the microphone. Without the microphone. They don't they don't send you the microphone. Yeah, you have to supply your own mic. But if say if you and this is just a, theoretically, say that you did not win that shirt, but you still had an occasion that you really needed to look good at. What what's a fellow to do? Or or a lady? Well, uh, first thing that comes to my mind where I do all my shopping for my great looking shirts <laughs> is at amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com. You know, we've got caps there, polo type shirts, uh, golf shirts, you name it, sweaters, I mean, sw hoodies, uh, sweatshirts, cups, a lot of great gift ideas there too. Anyway, you all check it out. You might find something you like at amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com. Throughout the month, in between episodes, not usually during the episodes, but it, it could happen. You can catch up with us socially, social distancing-like. Yeah, you can. Facebook.com slash groups slash ham college. Yep, uh, we're on Twitter at Ham College. Also got at, at Amateur Logic, and you can join our uh, Groups.io group if you, you know, mainly like to know when the next episodes are going to be. We're going to post that at all these different locations, but it's Groups.io/g/AmateurLogic, and yeah, there's occasionally some other stuff posted in there on that one, but. Uh, all of these we announce when the next live stream will be and when an episode has been released. And there's a good group of folks in there as well having a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. And not just Facebook.com slash group slash Ham College, but also slash Amateur Logic. There's really more activity there. But we have a Ham College group as well that's uh, topic specific. Yeah, yeah, there's been a little bit of activity on Twitter too. I've been uh, I've been on there posting a little bit here and there. Um, anyway, it's kind of picking up a little bit. 
especially since I haven't been traveling so much for work. I've been home more, so I've been on uh, a lot of our social stuff a little bit more. Yeah. Since I'm anti-social in person, and I have to do the whole distancing thing, so I've been getting my, my social fix in the digital way. Yeah, well, I know it's tough for a dean to do social distance, but, you know, when you when the world calls on you, you need to respond. You got to answer. Yep. Uh, we've also got our show notes, wiki, amateurlogic.tv slash wiki. Our friend Dan in 9LVS does that for us, and we appreciate it. You can find out what's going on at uh, Ham College and Amateur Logic right there. And with that, I think it's time to put the wrappers on this one, unless you've got uh, something that has totally evaded us so far tonight. No, I think that pretty much does it for me. Okay. Well, thanks for being here, everyone. We appreciate you joining us tonight. It's uh, another fun and interesting episode. And, yes, I did get two buzzers tonight. So Tommy's saying vengeance is mine, but it it wasn't (laughs) three butts. Could have been. It wasn't three. I still got the record for the most number in one episode. Yeah, and it definitely won't be the last buzzer in the extra pool here. So join us again next month around the end of the month. We'll pick back up with some more questions from the Amateur Radio Extra Exam Pool. This is the the pool that takes effect in July. So we're studying the, uh, you know, what, what will become the newest pool. So... I'm going to say 7-3. 7-3, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Like restriction, yeah. Uh, he did. Where'd you go? I disappeared. But I will be back. Time to go already. Seven three, seven three. That's not what he said. Seven three. (laughs)